Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Misha van der Heide about his classic Observing the Earth which came out under a project name Die Witness. Enjoy! In 1992, Dutch DJ producer Misha van der Heide, aka DJ Misha, started a project which he called Die Witness. The very first release that came out as Die Witness was the track Observing the Earth, a Hoover track which Misha did together with Piet Bergwoets, who you might know from, for example, the project Rank 1. I recently sat down with Misha in his studio to ask him about the story behind Observing the Earth and more. My first question to him was how old he was when he started to listen to music. Uh, whenever I had ears I listened to music I guess uh, maybe five, six, seven years. Okay. Do you remember some of the first dance tracks you did listen to? Um, yeah, it was a lot of uh, uh, funk, disco, uh, craft work, uh, a lot of electro, a lot of rap, everything really. Yeah. So when did you start with making your own music? Uh, yeah, it was a gradual process because I started making mixes and in that time it was just with a one turntable and a cassette player and a, and a tape deck and you started cutting up the music and, and then you, you gradually get one um, uh, drum computer and you get a synthesizer and then... So when I started I was maybe 10, 11 years old. Oh, pretty early. Yeah, very early, yeah. Do you still remember some of your first equipment? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, a Boss uh, DR was it 225 or something? I think it was one of my first uh, drum computers. I learned how to program rhythms. Uh, I had a sequencer, a Roland MC 500, 550, I don't remember. And my first keyboard uh, was a, a DX27 Yamaha. Okay. So the very first track that you released came out back in 1992, uh, Observing the Earth, a hardcore slash techno track you released under the name Die Witness together with Pete Bergwoods. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you and Pete meet each other? Um, Pete and I knew each other, uh, he, we lived in the same uh, town, still do, and uh, I think we were both like maybe 16, 17, 18 years old maybe. Um, And Pete had a, a sampler, and I, I think I needed. A, a, I was working on a track, and I needed a little bit more sample time. And I think I met him somewhere in maybe a snack bar or a football. I don't know. And asked him if we could, you know, get together and uh, maybe make a track, or uh, I could use his sampler. And I, I think that's how it started. But it, you know, it's a long time ago. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so how did you come up with the name Die Witness? Um, That's a very simple story. Uh, there was a, at the time, I don't think it still exists, uh, there was a, um, a, a, a spray um, which they released in, in America uh, that if you got uh, attacked by uh, whoever, you, you sprayed them on the face and it, it turned green like a, a, a Perschheim, uh, uh, Perpex, uh, what's, what's yeah. the name? And it would stay on your face. And it would be like a green. You get like a green mask on, and that's that's uh, that, that was the, was the name Die Witness. Ah, that's cool. And that's also why I used the the, the green uh, monster uh, yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on the covers. Yeah. So was there any other track that inspired you guys when you were working on uh, observing the Earth? No, no. Yeah, the Dominator sound. You know, we're like ah, I gotta do something with the Dominator sound. But other than that, no. It was just a a big mix of yeah, yeah. Of, of samples and you know ideas. Can you tell us a bit more about the production process of the track? Uh, I think at the time I, I had a, a sampler which could hold like four seconds. So uh, I went to uh, Pete and we, we, we got together for a little bit more sample time. And we didn't even have a mixer, you know, where you could uh, properly do a mix. So um, we made like a really raw demo uh, from two channels and then uh, Pete took the cassette like a, a real cassette to uh, Midtown in uh, uh, Rotterdam South. We, uh, there was um, René and Hans were working there still in the, in the, in the shop. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, maybe you know, should listen to this. And uh, like a week later or so, they called us up like, yeah, we want to release this. So and then we went to um, René Bakker's uh, studio. He had a little, a little place with a little mixer. So we connected everything up and there we, that's uh, where we mixed uh, the tracks. Okay. So what was the hardest part of the production? Probably doing the mix, you know, getting the mix back together like we, we envisioned it. Yeah. So where did the Hoover sound come from? 
probably sampled it from uh, one of the, the, the Mentasm or um, yeah. one of the uh, many tracks that we, they were using the, the Hoover sound at the, at the time. Yeah. And uh, the vocal samples in the track? Um, observing the Earth is uh, Carpenters. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> so how long did it take you guys to finish the track? Um, I think the track itself wasn't that wasn't wasn't that lengthy. It was maybe a, a, a day or so, and then when we did the mix, it was another day to do the the, the four tracks that were on the on the EP. Okay. So, uh, besides yourself and Pete, who was the first one to hear the track when it was done? Poor. I don't know. Probably the Midtown guys. Oh, of course, yeah. The, uh, Rene Bakker was the was one of the Midtown guys, so uh, he heard it. No, I don't know. Um, so it was your first release. Uh, what happened after the track uh, came out? I mean, there wasn't really internet back then. How did you get information about sales and how the track was doing? Everything was done through the through the record company. So uh, if, if it was selling somewhere, then you, you would get a, a statement or a copy or somebody would call you like, hey, uh, there's a release here and there's a release there. Okay. Um, in the year 2000, some new remixes came out on uh, Tidy Tracks. Uh, did you choose the new remixers or was this done by the label? No, it was, uh, it was licensed to Tidy Tracks and then they did everything there, so I had no, no say in that. Okay. Uh, how, um, how important has Observing the Earth been for your career? Well, it was the start of everything, so uh, I guess if, if that was never released, if, if Pete never went with the cassette to, to Midtown, then maybe you know I would never have released anything. But. Um, yeah, so I, I, it was the start of everything, so I guess very important. Yeah. Did you already DJ back then? Um, yeah, but you know, like uh, local uh, local things, local uh, local yeah. school parties or whatever like that. Yeah, but you still DJ now as a die witness? Yeah, I uh, sometimes I do some gigs uh, here and there, uh, yeah. usually in in Scotland or uh, Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Just whenever you like it. Whenever I feel like it, yeah. Okay. Uh, your main job is doing mastering and vinyl cutting. Uh, can you tell a bit more about what you're exactly doing? Uh, when somebody makes a track, they produce a track in their own uh, little uh, bedroom studio, whatever. They send it to me, and I make sure that it sounds, you know, has the, round, uh, the, the right level, the right uh, balance in, in low and high tones, and uh, and I also make uh, master uh, lacquers, which they use to make stampers, and they press records from that. Okay, and this is like your full-time job. That's a full-time job. Yeah. Okay. Um, will there ever be new Die Witness material, you think? Yeah, <laughs> they keep asking me that. Uh, never say never, but uh, I very much doubt it. Okay, well thank you very much for your time. No problem. Alright, that was it, this week's vlog. My interview with Misha van der Heide about Die Witness and observing the Earth. Misha, thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.